Life forms are roaming this planet. Hmm, time to find out. It's done. Let's head home. Really if I may, I know our encounter with the hunter is the last thing anyone wants to talk about right now, but he said something that I can't get out of my mind. Unity. Do you remember that? Exactly. Somehow. The thing is, I've heard that word before. It's an important concept in Keeper Aquilus's speeches. The priest? Is the Sanctum Universum going to bless our little crusade of discovery? It can't be a coincidence. The Sanctum has always believed that answers are out there in the stars. Look, I know it's the longest of shots and the biggest leap of faith I could ever ask us all to take, but why not talk to him? It's right here in the city, just a block or so from the lodge. There's no harm in gathering more information. A visit to the Sanctum might actually be quite enlightening. Thank you. I know it's not much to go on, but something about this feels right. I'll meet you over there. I know. Look, we all feel like we've been a million times over. But I think I have something. I'm There's serious. Something I need to talk to you, about. you forget how much you take a place like the Lodge for granted. 
until it's threatened. When you have a few moments, there's something I'd like to discuss. Sorry to pull you aside like this, but I wanted to take a moment to congratulate you. Taking those steps to eradicate the Terramorph threat is a... Yes, exactly. I only wish that the United Colonies chose to exterminate. Apparently... I beg to differ with you. Deploying the Asili solution is going to take years, perhaps even decades. The microbe would have cut that time drastically. I'm sorry to hear that, but what's done is done. The Asili's method has been deployed, so we'll have to wait and see if it's effective. Unfortunately, locking away the Lazarus plant instead of eliminating it adds to the risk. Anything that accelerates... Of course, I wouldn't have it any other... I appreciate the fact that you've taken the time to listen to my opinion on the matter. I'm sorry if I've hurt you in any way. I wouldn't want anything like this to come between us. Keeper Aquilus, can we have a moment? Ah, oh, Mateo. It's been too long. How are your parents? Your mother's still struggling with that azalea garden? No, she figured that out a while ago. Had to adjust the pH levels in the soil. But, Keeper, I didn't come to catch up. Oh. Huh. Well, what's on both your minds? Keeper, we were hoping to talk to you about... Unity. <laughs> you want to subject your friend here to one of our talks, Matteo? The future of humanity is always a long discussion. No, that's not exactly what I meant. Keeper, when you talk about unity, well... Does it mean anything else? Something... Secret? Perhaps you should talk about this inside.
Oh, now that we have a little privacy, why don't you tell me exactly what it is that brought you two here? They're like nothing we've ever seen, Keeper. Gravitational distortion, sub-audio harmonic sequencing, unidentifiable energy fluctuations. Uh, I caught half of that. So, these things are unusual? Even in your experience? There have always been mysteries that seem to defy our understanding of the universe. Beyond rational thought, we enter life as an act of someone else's faith in us. There's no way of knowing who we will become, and yet the risk is made anyway. So you've pushed into the unknown, not knowing where it would take you. And it's brought you here. I think I can. If you're willing to find your way in the dark for a bit longer, I can give you a path to discovering its meaning. There's an old story, far older than the Sanctum Universum, of someone who walked the settled systems and saw every corner of it. This pilgrim claimed he found the true meaning of unity. I always thought of it as just a parable for trying to bring humanity together, but Maybe it's more. In my story, the pilgrim met the founders of the House of Enlightenment and the enigmatic cult of the Varun, and he gave them each a part of the truth. Then he goes to his final resting place to live out the rest of his days in contemplation of infinitum addendum, his addition or contribution to the infinite. But what if the story isn't a metaphor, but a code, a way of finding the pilgrim again, or at least his grave? But what if it does? Not my version, obviously, but the House of Enlightenment, Varun. I've spoken to them before, but I never thought of scrutinizing their answers for clues. Because I wasn't looking to find unity in the same sense you are. A fresh set of eyes might reveal the truth. Oh yes, typically. But there is a lone zealot that was captured recently for attacking UC ships. I've visited her a couple of times. Hopefully, she'll be willing to talk to you as well. And if you need directions to the Enlightened, they have a branch in the well helping the poorest citizens of New Atlantis find a better life for themselves. I'll stay here with the Keeper. We need to catch up. And I wouldn't mind asking him a few more questions.
love to speak to you. Not sure if those Varun zealots live in space or got separated from their own planet or what, but they scavenge what they need. Lots of old facilities left over from the colony war, and they like to pick them. A visitor? I have all the company I need. He knows not the truth. He sends another to ask more incessant questions. Perhaps you should hear us out before you decide to cast judgment. The Great Serpent waits in the shadows. He will entwine the universe, and all but the faithful will be made as dust. That is the truth. No more, no less. Anything you could tell us would be tremendously helpful. Yes, I have spoken to your Keeper about this. I will tell you what I told him, and then you will leave me. Jinan Varun meets the Unbeliever. He gives false prophecy to Jinan. But such is Jinan's conviction in the Great Serpent, he does not hesitate. He cuts the Unbeliever down. But the Unbeliever returns. Jinan realizes the Great Serpent is testing him, and he will not be found wanting. Four times they fight. Over 120 rotations of the planet they are on. Remember these four battles, Jinan, the Unbeliever says. Remember these 120 rotations. But Jinan knows this is blasphemy and delivers the killing blow. That is all. I have heard of no such thing. If it exists, it is a shadow that the Great Serpent casts to deceive the Faithless. Then we are done. Leave me. We should have a talk, when you have the time, of course. When you have a moment, I'd like to speak to you. Let me know if I can help you. We run a number of social programs, from financial aid to food banks. If it's about the financial or food assistance programs, we are backlogged. Don't worry, we're doing everything we can. Oh, you're not. Sorry. Can I help you? We don't mean to be intrusive. Any information you could provide would be very useful. Listen, I've talked about this with him a ton of times, and there's no record of a Unity Pilgrim, but since you both insist, our early records are mostly administrative. Humanitarian projects, group counseling notes, charity expenditures. But there is a series of exchanges the founding members recorded in a lot of detail. It's the closest thing I have to what Aquilus is describing.
Yeah, I mean, he's always going on about trying to bring people of all beliefs together. Really wants there to be some shared story or origin. Look, I like the Keeper, but belief is the problem, okay? We don't need a shared narrative or theology. We need to help each other in practical terms. A man walks into the first house of enlightenment. The founding members just call him the Drifter. So they think he's a charity case at first, but no, the Drifter asks them a bunch of questions. If your philosophy is built on an individual's own morality, what about the second person? That second person might disagree. Isn't the problem of two what you're really looking for? And the founders respond, each individual must understand how the second person lifts them up. All of human effort is a story of cooperation pushing us forward. And it kind of goes on like that. He comes back every week for a year. Same conversation every time. Second person this, the problem of do that. It's part of our core principles. There's no God pushing us to do good for some eternal reward. We have to help each other because we choose to. If no one takes responsibility for making the settled systems better, then we're just leaving it to the tyrants to bully the rest of us. Honestly, I think the founding members made it all up. There was a little more hesitation being openly atheist in the early days. I think they were experimenting with writing their own scripture. Fortunately, that got abandoned pretty quick. After the records of the Drifter end, you never see anything like it again. Besides what the Keeper would say about it, sounds like a gathering point or a center, or in mathematics it would mean one, like the one, the first or the beginning. Always happy to help. If you'll excuse me, I've got a lot of aid efforts to coordinate. something you might be interested in. Neon, I miss New Atlantis. back. What did you learn? Was there something hidden in their stories, like we thought? Yes. 
what he added to infinity. Maybe that points to a name. If we're looking for his resting place, we'd need to know the name of the star system, wouldn't we? What else did you learn? If there really is a location the Pilgrim wanted us to find, those do sound awfully like coordinates. Was there anything else? Hmm. Planets are often named by number. That second might mean the second planet in the system. Let's see. We have something that could be coordinates. Something that could point to a planet in the system. But what's the name of the system? Infinitum addendum. What if we break down the parts? No systems named finite or add. That just leaves in and dumb. <laughs> well, that's certainly how I feel. Yes, that's it. The second planet in Indum, at 4 and 120. That's where you'll find the Pilgrim's resting place. And from there, maybe you'll find the true meaning of unity. Before you go, you've now spoken to many different perspectives in our universe. In a way, you'll be carrying their philosophies with you on this journey. I know you're looking for a specific unity, but if you had to guess what it was, what interpretation would you give it? Ah, but what makes something like that holy? Gravity is also a force that brings things together. Should that be sanctified? It is one of the great contradictions of belief. We feel the presence of something out there, but we insist that it is also everywhere. So you think this word unity describes that divine unknowableness that the pilgrim searched for? Ancient humans thought the concept of gravity was miraculous. Until we know more about the unity, we also could be jumping to the wrong conclusions. Well, I won't keep you any longer. This has been fun, I have to admit. Go, find your truth. There's something I need to talk to you about. Look, I wanted to take this opportunity to thank you. The fact that you risked your life to save me, I... I don't know what to say. Then I'll say it again. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. My only wish is that my rescue hadn't come at the expense of Sam's life. He was one of my closest colleagues and a cherished friend. Oh, poor Cora. I'm sure the poor thing is devastated. She's lost a wonderful father. I really wish I could believe that. Our charter at Constellation has always been to analyze the unknown, but rarely at the expense of our members' lives. Yet all the while, I've been cavalier about taking risks and pushing the boundaries, not appreciating the true cost of my actions. Had I not pushed so hard to pursue the Starborn, perhaps none of this would have happened at all and Sam would still be alive. I can't sugarcoat our mission statement. Space travel and planetary exploration is inherently risky. Even Constellation's founder, Sebastian Banks, went missing on an expedition. But this particular danger with the Starborn is off the scale. We truly don't know what we're dealing with.
Of course I can. Damn it! Why is this happening to us? We're explorers. Our curiosity pushes us to seek answers to life's mysteries. It's one of the core traits of humankind. Yet in return, this is what the universe throws at us. Beings from God knows where who are trying to murder us. Why? What have we done wrong? No, I refuse to allow Sam's death to be attributed to bad luck. It isn't fair. The question is, where do we go from here? Do we stop exploring? Stop pushing the boundaries? Take a more aggressive posture towards the universe? I don't know where to begin. you're right. I just hope we don't make the same fatal mistake twice. Well, I suppose that's all I had on my mind for now. Oh, it was a relief to get all of that out in the open. I'm sorry I got so angry. But I assure you, it's nothing personal. You're the only one I feel comfortable talking with about these things. Good, because I expect this won't be the last time I intend to cry on your shoulder or scream in your face. Well, we have a long road ahead of us. I suppose it's high time we get back to work.
questions for you. Hello. Beautiful sculpture. Hmm. I suspect it was placed here for some sort of specific purpose rather than as an artistic statement.
what have we got? Animal, vegetable, or mineral? I wanted to see what you would 